Je 56 branches mola sota Gambia ja ha ka Gambia kono ani Gambia bantala bankol nko kono ki ya bere to kodo si fa si fa fo falindiro fo nyadi lafta meme men na kodi to poto ni kodi maro jannam nombo wanti nyonta andum fana nata anoda enterprise sotale wolam nyindi ko domorol fana kol fana be firale de dadi ma ni domorol ni fana betiat gambia dawda yalo ma fum fa kendol sotale ji ha e wo moy o diat ha apelenta ni wo ka ni na lafta nyela kendol e bina ji yalo bu kani la ko la baraka ba yalo ndel chosa no lo baraka Are you guys talking about money transfer to buy provisions? Yes. yes. But don't you know about Baluo? 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 What is Baluo? Baluo is a service that your son can use to send provisions directly to you guys from the shop. And you don't have to worry about exchange rates. Tell me how Baluo works. It's very simple. Just log on to baluo.com and shop or download the app on your phone. You can shop on the website or using the app to buy online basic products for your family and friends. With Baluo, you decide what your money is spent on. Your money, your choice. Buy online products for your family and friends in the Gambia, Senegal, Nigeria or Mali. Baluo, better than sending money. For the first time in the history of the Gambia, Gambia Printing Publishing Corporation proudly introduces the Biliomatic Exercise Book Printing Machine. The machine has the capacity to print more than 20,000 books per hour. Yes, 20,000 books per hour. It also prints magazines, newspapers, calendars, flyers, normal books and all kinds of printed documents plus items at affordable prices. With the Bilomatic printing machine, GPPC can now render high quality and non size restricted printing service supply across the sub region. Rush now and partner with GPPC for all your public and private printing service needs. Print with us today, and you'd be offered highly professional, reliable, and efficient service delivery by our team of experts. The Gambia Printing and Publishing Corporation is here to meet all demands and is reliable at all times. For more info, contact us on 437-4493 or 437-4402. GPPC is Gambian and it's yours.
and welcome to the brunch on Care Fatu. I'm Lamin Cham, and this is our weekly look at uh, current affairs in the Gambia over the last seven days. This week, hot on our menu, of course, is the report institu- report of the task force instituted to investigate the death of Gambian children, ac- according to uh, due, of course, to acute kidney injury, which, of course happened when they took drugs that's believed to have been contaminated. Yesterday, the Gambia government issued its release, its report on the matter, as well as measures or actions it has taken. Are these actions enough? Well, we will discuss this in this panel here in the next one hour. With me in the studio, on my far right, uh, far right is uh, Malamin Barrow. He is a microbiologist. Um, um, Mr. Barrow, welcome. Thank you. Yusuf Tello of Flex Dan, editor of the Gainago, wrote extensively on the Aki issue. He's here with a report um, that the government presented yesterday, and he will give his perspective on the whole scenario. And Demba Ali Jao, veteran journalists, have also written and spoken a lot about this and other issues. Other issues, of course, on the menu will include, of course, the recent controversy surrounding the provision of uh, SUVs for our National Assembly. The Senate Gambia Bridge, has it been mortgage or what do you think? Well, you follow us, our, perspe- our panelists will uh, provide their perspectives uh, on that too. This plus others will be in the menu. First though, like I said, the hot debate of course is the uh, release yesterday of the government report on the Aki <coughs> deaths. Let me begin uh, with uh, Flexdown, who, like I said, wrote extensively on the issue and was at the press briefing, because the government wanted us to call it a press briefing yesterday when the Minister of Health, alongside the government spokesman and his uh, other colleagues, were uh, presenting the report. Flex, you covered the press conference. We had, of course, measures that the government has taken, but take us back. Why do you think the press conference has been called now, hmm. when the report probably we understood might have been ready a long time ago. Yes, and um, I think that's the question on everybody's lips um, with regards to the report. Um, we have the report here with us today because we got a copy yesterday and we've been spending all night going through it. Mm-hmm. It's been a very, very busy week for the government and AKI, the victims as well, um, starting from Monday. Um, the victims opened up their court case on Monday and um, it was well covered in the media Um, of course raising a lot of attention Um, we do have information um, that the victims the following day met the government that's the Minister of Health himself on Tuesday they had a conversation closed the meeting um, where they even informed them that this report would be coming out soon Mm. so you can see Things are happening as soon as court cases started Mm. kicking off. Um, So that was on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. And um, when they had a conversation with the victims, they told them that the report would actually be launched um, this week. And it was supposed to be, they said, Thursday. But towards the end of the week, they did communicate with them. And um, Friday, it was eventually um, issued yesterday. And um, if you compare the prayers in the writ of summons yes. and some of the actions which the government has done, yes. and you look at some of the publications which we have been writing short pieces, yes. you will see that um, even some of the actions which the government has, rec- the recommendations mm-hmm. in here, mm-hmm. do tally with some of the um, prayers from the writ of summons. Exactly. Ah. And the first of that would be to authoritatively declare that the government must announce that the children died as a result of taking these medicines which were manufactured in India by made in pharmaceuticals and distributed, imported and distributed Did in the findings confirmed? 
the findings have confirmed that authoritatively this time. Ah, oh. We are no longer talking about it may now it time be or else. rainy season. Rainy season. How many rainy seasons oh, have my, we oh, had yes. in this country? Uncontained. I've never had such issues. I'm <laughs> sure um, we have an expert here yeah, really. who might even be able to help us. But for the status, I know that's the first um, issue, yeah. which definitely is the starting point. What caused the death of these children? Good. And, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. you, you've been following this case since it broke uh, two years ago now, isn't it? One and one, a half year or so. Just one year. About just a year ago, year, ago yes. Um, and, and, uh, and then, of course, um, the government promised that they will launch an investigation. It's now been done. Here is the report. From what you have heard and what you have seen, <laughs> um, what's your perspective? Yes, uh, uh, well, I think it's uh, it's more than a co coincidence that the report is coming out right now after the families of the victims have um, instituted a court action. Mm. Yeah, I think um, it shows you that, uh, okay, the government's political will was a little bit laxed mm. in, this, in this matter. Because, you know, I mean, these people have been following this case for a long time. In fact, uh, there was a time, I understand, um, the government had a delegation that went around to the various families trying to give them money, you know, for whatever reason. And I understand the, they even, I mean, uh, rejected, the families rejected the, the, yeah. the, 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 the money that were, were given to them, you know. Yeah. And then they wanted the government to actually take more affirmative action mm -hmm. on the matter. But, you know, I mean, things have been so slow. And then eventually they set up this task force, which uh, submitted their report to the president. And then uh, hardly anyone knew what had become of that report until the families took the matter to court and then now we've got the report uh, according to i mean uh, mr taylor it shows that some of the prayers of the i mean the families in court actually tally with what um, the report has uh, concluded so i mean let's hope that uh, this time around the, the government would be very very serious about this matter and they take it to its final conclusion one of the key takeaways from the report is the is it the dismissal of the um, head Director, of the, yeah. uh, as well as his secretary or uh, mm. uh, so two, two no I think it's the deputy, deputy director deputy director, director and, and the deputy uh, director of the medical is it control no, agency yes, whatever medical yeah. control MCA, yes. Yes. MCA. Mm -hmm. okay MCA. Uh, yeah. I've been, I've been yeah I, I think I mean there has been a conflict of interest in this area because we understand that some of these people you know they are the resp uh, they are responsible for issuing out licenses for uh, uh, management of pharmacies and, and uh, we understand you know some of them even issued themselves with licensing and they were responsible for the i mean the, uh, the controlling or moni monitoring some pharmacies but what has what happened in this case it appears that you know some of those license holders actually had to um, kind of uh, either rent their license to others you know who were operating pharmacies and they had had very very little control over what those people were importing into this so that was a contradiction you know honestly yeah, I think there, it was, there was this case, yeah. of, uh, case yeah. of conflict of interest no, uh, in the report about in one case but many people tried the conflict of interest rampant uh, in you know in this in in this in the system because it goes like this before you can be able to import <coughs> drugs into this country you must be a licensed pharmacist if you don't have a license, you must rent a license of somebody. It looks like the people who are at the both the medical control agency and the pharmacy council, mm -hmm. these are the license holders. These are the people who are the only legible people to import drugs. They don't have the money, so they rent out their licenses to commercial people who can do it. Yet they are the ones who should control and regulate Mm, that mm. business. So how can you be renting your license to Flex, for example, and expect, you know, we expect that you will definitely supervise what Flex does. And, and, and according to the terms in those licenses, the license holders themselves must spend some time in the pharmacies where their license are, are, are rented. They don't do it because if they have to work eight hours at the office, when are they going to have time to go to the pharmacies where their license are operating? Yeah. So let's go, let's so cross to the right. expert, like you said. Malamin Barrow, um, of course you work in the, in, in, a, in the laboratory That's systems right. and, and yeah. you know a little about this toxic. What's been your take? Well, it's like this. Uh, it's an unfortunate situation. Uh, and uh, I will start by saying uh, the minister, the honorable minister, at least at yesterday's conference, 
or briefing appears to be very contrite and remorseful. Oh, okay. For, Unlike for, for once, you, you think he was remorseful. Certainly appeared to be Even contrite and remorseful. <laughs> Unlike the beginning of this crisis, mm. where the entire ministry appears to be defensive, defensive yeah. and kind of grandstanding. Mm. Uh, I think it must have dawned on them and on everybody that uh, the matter at hand is extremely serious. Mm. It has both legal, moral implications as well mm -hmm. as uh, professional accountability. Mm -hmm. When this dawned on everybody, mm -hmm. uh, it, it, you know, people have to take matters differently. And it has an international implication. Exactly. Though. I think that's so going to dawn on So, if them. you look at the genesis of this crisis, mm -hmm. we, the public, came to know about this from a press release from the RVTH hospital, not even from the ministry. Yes, they are epidemic. An, an unsigned and undated press statement from the hospital. Mm -hmm. So that was like, for anybody who is in the professional business, it's alarming. I mean, you would have thought that matter would have been communicated to the ministry's epidemiology, to the, to the and, system. And, and without preempt, let me tell you that that first list came after we in the standard ran a front page story okay. quoting somebody who said investigation have started Potato. about a certain so there mysterious is, there's story. been a lot of missteps and i think i'm not sure whether it is intentional or just systemic lapse mm. this is what's happening in in government system systemic lapse laxity basically uh, people are not following up their responsibilities to the end mm. and the making sure that there is accountability so when a crisis happens it becomes really difficult to to know when it started, who started it, where it started. So, it, the, basically, the AKI tragedy is a, a symptom of systemic collapse. That's what it is. And it's, it is more than uh, scapegoating or blaming the MCA or blaming a particular individual. Because what came uh, obvious to me, or what sort of I highlighted in the minister's uh, briefing, was um, uh, quoting the legislation that enabled, or that uh, that enabled the MCA to to be installed. The legislation has, according to the minister, uh, a quality control laboratory to have been established. It's not there. It is not there. So, I mean, the, the MCA do not have to, I mean, they are not really going to procure this by themselves. Yeah, the government must provide. Exactly. So, if that is not there and that this situation happens, and remember, uh, when the crisis was at its height, uh, um, uh, and it was sort of a, a, like the made in pharmacy was responsible for procuring this and therefore connected somewhat to the Indian government. Mm -hmm. The, there was a press release from them as well that as much as that being is the case, mm -hmm. every country importing exactly. medication yes. has their own responsibility yes. That's true. That's <laughs> to do their own testing. Yeah, that is true. So, so I mean, the, the, you know, the, 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 the situation is really uh, uh, an extremely unfortunate and serious matter. But I'm going to say it, it's a sign or a symptom of a systemic collapse. Mm -hmm. But are you impressed with the measures taken by the government? I think it's a step in the right direction, uh, except that there is a lot of uh, we have d we will be doing this, we will be doing that, we will be in this, and this is almost unlike an acute crisis that needs immediate, immediate attention. I'm sure they are uh, they are well intentioned, uh, and the people who are implementing these are you know they're like smart people very clever dr samata is a very clever surgeon and a, a sincere person i think mm -hmm. but you know when you operate in a milieu in a system that it's uh like <laughs> the tragic mm -hmm. it's very difficult to, uh, uh, to 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 do things that you really want to do or have to do until there is a crisis and everybody starts to find uh, uh, a scapegoat now, going to the dismissal of the, um, uh, the, the director and these of MCA, it's, it's really unfortunate mm -hmm. because really everybody knew from top to bottom that this conflict of interest is so pervasive. Mm -hmm. 
and in the and, and it's, actually, it's not limited to the to the medical profession itself mm -hmm. You will find uh, managing directors uh, that are using their office to prop up their own businesses in some other places. Mm -hmm. And everybody thinks it's kind of okay, or some, if not okay, it's, it's, it's all right. You know, nobody bothers about it. So we really, as an ethical issue, conflict of interest is something that the Gambian society must really face up to and challenge. We cannot have people operating a public service and then benefiting in the personally benefiting from it in their own way or their brother or their sons in a different environment this is not acceptable good uh, good point eh? um let's go now to the nitty-gritty of the report yeah. uh, flex and, and like i said even before you had extensively covered this crisis <laughs> so what are the main takeaways apart from the thing we've just dealt with uh, that is the dismissal of uh, those two, two top officials. Um, you said first the government now, for once, mm -hmm. for the first time, have accepted that these children died because of uh, uh, Aki, yes. because of the contaminated drugs. Mm -hmm. In the past, like all of you said, they were in the defensive. Or mm -hmm. some, some, some other press release or analysis came to say that, oh, this could have been uh, malaria or malaria. Heavy rains. Eh? Rains. <laughs> rains, <laughs> rains, 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 rains. <laughs> so, so, so now we are on, the, on, on, the, on one page now. Definitely everybody agreed this was caused yes. by Aki, contamination of drugs that led, that, you know, that led to Aki and then to the, to the death of the children. Mm -hmm. Any other important takeaways? Some of the big important takeaways, and also this relates to the court case, uh -huh. is the license of Atlantic Pharmaceuticals. Okay. Um, it was temporarily banned, yes. but now mm. it is permanently banned. That is also one of the prayers. Yes, there are nine prayers in the court. So the license, uh, which was been used by Atlantic, to yes. which is now permanently banned, revoked yes. permanently. But the strange thing mm -hmm. is, if you look at the parliamentary report mm -hmm. of a on AKI, yeah, it actually almost exonerates. Um, the Atlantic Pharmaceutical saying ah. that they followed the MCA's guidelines. Okay. You see, so that means that this report now mm -hmm. is telling you that what Parliament what was, Parliament found, was found that you know, was, was not enough. Was, or, or was certainly was they did not they did not do a thorough enough work enough. on that particular aspect. Yeah, but there were but do we good know recommendations there. Atlantic uh, Pharmacy mm -hmm. are they using one professional's license? And and are and, and not all the importers using the same license? So, so these the are question. where the investigators, the journalists have to dig in deep yeah. and get to the bottom of because this. Because we know that some some people have given license. Yes, and you buy to, it. To, to, two or three. <laughs> because they have they have two retails, two one 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 wholesale, mm -hmm. so they can have license rented to two or three different so for example the license being used by Atlantic mm -hmm. belongs to one professional who also is renting is to somebody else uh, what do you do with that yeah is it atlantic alone who will be found wanting or and even atlantic themselves can rebrand themselves coming in a different oh they can name. they can yeah they can abandon that <laughs> license forget about that and, and get Lamin coming Jam's with license. a different name uh -huh. and then just work with that or even partner with somebody else perhaps oh. Oh. who has but let's not um speculate oh, right, um right, right. those are all things which they need to be very very watchful of. any other takeaway mm. yes um, the issue of um, conflict of interest. Yes. <laughs> Number five in the recommendation is saying in addressing conflict of interest, the Ministry of Health should, with immediate effect, make regulations or rules for the prevention and management of conflict of interest concerning staff or board members of regulatory bodies under its purview and engage in private business or practice. Now, I would say this recommendation, mm -hmm. just like uh, our experts have said, said yes. mm -hmm. I think should even go to not only the Ministry of Health, all the other different uh, institutions. Mm -hmm. That should clearly be something that they are do. They should do. You cannot allow conflict of interest. Yeah. You are the supervising. That is um, the deputy um, executive director, mm -hmm. um, Madam Ja Shao, mm -hmm. who in this report mm -hmm. it says. She was the supervising um, pharmacist for two reputable, mm -hmm. to be fair to her, mm -hmm. pharmacies in this country. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, mm -hmm. she was the MCA executive, deputy executive director. The question now arises, is, is she in fact the only one? You see? If I may just interject. Yes, that is there, Mr. Barrow, yes. You see, I think we, uh, when I say a systemic uh, issue, 
Because what tends to happen is the people who are proposing these legislations are themselves the ones involved in this. So they write these things ah, in their own favor. I and this is just general, it's not just, like I said, it's not just government, this is a general <laughs> government <laughs> matter. When the proposals of this kind of rules and regulations, instead of inviting uh, 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 independent outside bodies mm -hmm. to work with them to propose legislation, to get it through the legal framework, it's the old director and his assistant and his permanent secretaries who probably have a vested interest in something. So even in the very drafting of the legislation, <laughs> exactly. there's a conflict exactly. of interest from the very old go. Exactly. <laughs> and it would appear they would sort of uh, confuse the minds of the general public with some technical mumbo jumbo and these ah, people would think go. and the journalists wouldn't would, would it be able to decide further questions? Because, because yeah, these, are, these are specialized <laughs> areas. Yeah, they, you know, under that cover, it's a specialized area. Yes, yes. Yeah. That, that, that is the must, cover they use. I mean, every, especially in uh, on healthcare issues, mm -hmm. you must involve patient advocacy groups. Mm -hmm. Whatever you do, you must involve the local priest, the local imam, and some uh, healthcare NGOs, and probably a health specialized legal firm. Mm -hmm. Put them together. Let them design healthcare quality standards. I said just left to the surgeon, the gynecologist and this and that to write whatever they want to write in favor of the either the person or the profession. Mm -hmm. Even the professions have to be accountable. So what does this say now of your prof oh, well your well similar your profession of medic medic medi medical and, and medicine, the field of medicine in the country now, because apparently we have through negligence or through something, 70 people died. This is this one is contaminated drugs. There could have been other things, mm -hmm. other type of drugs, perhaps that are also killing. We didn't know, and not only other type of drugs, but other types of manufacturers. Manufacturers. This is not. I mean, this has been discovered. Uh, uh, like I say, the case of uh, substandard and adulterated. Uh, uh, pain medication is pretty notorious in our West Africa region. Mm. Apparently there is a WHO report that says that uh, substandard and adulterated malaria medication mm. in West Africa is worth 400 million US dollars. More My lucrative God. than cocaine. My mm. goodness, say that yeah. again. <laughs> yeah, for malaria, not everything else. Mm. Malaria, substandard and adulterated malaria drug within the West Africa region is approximately 400 and something million US dollars. So, so it means that the quantum we take, I, I, I'm, it, yeah. the quantum we take might be, might be just substandard. I, I mean, I cannot say specifically, <laughs> but like I say, the onus is the onus of verification, quality control, testing, and all aids on your national body. So, the, don't because be, so bear in mind, you know, there are a lot of bad people around. <laughs> And they don't really care because what, what's, what's, what's been identified as the report says in this case is the, 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 the substance that, was, that has caused this is uh, diethylene glycol and glycol. Now this is an industrial solvent, it's your antifreeze you put in your car to this thing. Why would anybody use it? It's, I, you know, the, the alternative would have been glycerin. It's more expensive. So if you have, uh, and you do have a lot of bad people around, I can tell you, uh, if people can put uh, chalk dust in, medi in medicines and sell it as paracetamol, mm -hmm. they are not amenable to putting uh, a glycer a diethyl, a glycol, <coughs> diethylene glycol, you just mean, for a you fast, mean, quick profit. You mean what the body bunkers used to do? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. They painted, uh, how do, what do you call it? Uh, uh, what is the name of this uh, bin? Uh, locust bin. <laughs> they <laughs> painted, they <laughs> just, no. they, uh, well, they so painted locust bins and, and reportedly every, sold to Every our nation must really prepare itself for this kind of uh, uh, occurrences and they will happen. And in the case of the Gambia, it's, it's disheartening all the time and many times all of you know you see directors and people would come on national tv oh we don't have capacity and these are, these are people riding <laughs> like 3.5 million dollar cars and you're still complaining about lack of capacity lack of the it's just un, uh, unconscionable. Mm -hmm. really unconscionable one would have expected that what mr barrow has been out highlighting like a thorough 
research research on whether other areas might not have been affected Absolutely. would have come in the report but is there any exactly. indication that there will be a no um there is not much in fact i believe the report is um limited in scope mm. um the reason being fine there's one thing to cause the aki mm -hmm. but and we have an expert hopefully he can correct me mm -hmm. the other thing is as soon as you have aki the systems to diagnose it and also treat it yeah mm -hmm. and this calls for um what's the what's the, the um, if you have medical a, term again yes the, where the, uh, you're plugged into the machine and it helps you your dialysis. kidney have dialysis dialysis. Oh, dialysis. 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 Yeah, dialysis why is it that we don't have those systems in this country properly there are yeah. dialysis I, machines but i, I, I think, think we do have i think we do have them but maybe you, you have and if i enough. may just come into here mm -hmm. i think exactly. Uh, I do not want to preempt any legal propositions, but oh, yes, you yes. see what we, I mean, we have to say what we have to say. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, it's one thing to have a, a, a chemical that is causing AKI in children, mm -hmm. and you have to be very careful about this, because once this goes to court, the lawyers would have a field day. Field day. It's yeah, the government was keen or not to. I, I, do, give I don't it, blame them. I don't blame oh, them. We should be mindful obviously, too. we are, as a nation, we have an interest yes, in definitely. the national rep. It's, because for the minister, like I said, he was pretty, really remorseful, I think. Yes. Uh, because also there is a reputational issue in here. Yeah, and it's an international dimension. I think exactly, that is what has done on government. That, come here. on, this is not a local you, issue. From, from a lawyer's point of view, I hope uh, they don't, you have to think about this. Yeah. Uh, when the field is all open, it's one thing to have an IKI, but mm -hmm. it's another thing to die of something else. Something else. So the lawyers would want to know exactly when you say they have AKI, but did they die of AKI? Yes. And what is the evidence that mm -hmm. uh, you have to produce to convince isn't that me? Not, isn't that not the notion some people want to actually trade not long ago in some press? release or so, no, some press it, conference. Well, you can be sure that the lawyers would obviously be labor on this. <laughs> they, will, they will be on a fishing expedition. <laughs> it's not even a fishing expedition because uh, a cause of death is different from a cause of Actually disease. Actually contracting the disease uh -huh. is different so from dying from it. <laughs> anyway, but then, <laughs> yes, uh, a lot let's more go to Jawa. Yeah. So far, what do you have? Uh, let's, let's hear, I mean, Flex. I think he's yeah. the, I mean. Okay, Flex, <laughs> what are the other takeaways? So, um, some of the big, big points which are here as well. Uh, still on the issue of conflict of interest, and I think there's some more information that we could find out. Mm -hmm. They are recommending for the government of the Gambia to refer the matter of Said Kebe, who w is the supervising pharmacist for Atlantic Pharmacy, mm -hmm. to the Pharmacy Council for appropriate disciplinary action. I think they should have even gone to the police because of the issue of how he, they managed to get their licensing should also be looked into, which could point out to the people who are given this so license. So now we get it, it, the field is getting narrower mm -hmm. now. So we they identified the license uh, under which Atlantic was trading, mm -hmm. and the license holder is one state. It's said Kebe, the supervising uh, pharmacist, and it's been recommended that he should be disciplinary action. He should be disciplined by the pharmacy council. I don't think that's enough. I think this should be a police matter for definitely mm -hmm. for the atlantic pharmacy um, <coughs> representative mm -hmm. or the person so the pharmacy i don't cancer. know what you think and then perhaps we can unravel the issue of how did they get licenses in the first place who were the people who gave them the license i think if, if and did they satisfy you because i think uh, because I think one thing must be pharmacists what, first yes uh, because one thing be given license. one thing we must know mm. made in pharmaceuticals has had a bad track record and it hasn't started now they have series of cases that's meant with the so, indian company yes yeah. so what this means is background checks mm. where correct background checks mm -hmm. were not even done mm -hmm. so but they still managed to get licenses right. through atlantic pharmaceutical so which for me is a real real worry i think maybe i think when, when i when, i think when i first <coughs> went investigated these things what i found out is that in order to import drugs you must be a pharmacist in order before you be given a license and then the argument was there were very few pharmacists in this country mm. if they don't have the money to bring in drugs they will have to rent it to people who have money mm -hmm. so there are people who are bringing drugs here who doesn't know anything mm -hmm. in drugs they just give 
money and they get imported they, they depend on those pharmacies you know to 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 to, to, to you know to, to be able to import these things and there are very few of them i even come across a fact that they wouldn't open to foreigners mm. they can only have so so limited foreign foreigners as pharmacists so i mean the whole thing is now a cabal a click mm. uh, it stays with them you you have to be a pharmacist before you can have a license and the same people are the people who are regulators and they are the pharmacists they are the license holders so that's what brought a whole lot of uh, you know problems in this in this issue and, and mca Transparent, uh-huh. mca was doing what you they call listing <laughs> which is not provided for in their act so what do you mean by listing listing is neither here or there mm-hmm. because of they have not that means you have not tested it okay you have okay. not really taken it abroad for mm-hmm. example what mca would have to result to now mm-hmm. to get um it approved to senegal yes. to some lab and then senegal. you can say fine go ahead you know it listing is it's not it's not allowed for so you have to to be registered for the drug to be registered mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. you have to go through the right test you have to go through the rigorous check. which is not available in the gambia yes right? so yes which we don't have the um, equipment and this could actually lead to shortage in drugs in yes, the country i remember there was a concern about this uh, pharmacy saying yes. that if you subject them to this kind of thing yes. uh, there will be delays in the supply be, and when we have um shortage yeah. obviously economics the prices did the report so talk about the need for gambia or did it say there's an effort been made for gambia to get this uh, lab oh yes oh yes it's stated there it's stated here oh, it's stated here that is one of the key recommendations okay to get a lab okay. definitely all right it's stated in here and the government has started doing some work towards this oh okay um, i, I heard about this there's, there's a site in brusubi here okay they you, found you, a site. you know the big no well i'm not sure whether that's the way but there's a big place which was meant to be a hospital mm-hmm. right by the bruce b johnson there. okay uh a couple of months ago i saw some health officials and if i'm right it's been suggested that that is that place part of that place will be used to build uh, uh, uh this much needed yeah. the uh, minister uh, the yesterday bank. did reveal that they are doing the architectural designs well i i i tumbled on a visit by some top too. health officials at that mm-hmm. site there mm-hmm. and i i i was told that uh, that place might be the place for so there is something so, so there is something about there is something out. happening mm-hmm. when we will get this um <laughs> i think com- if i may add concomitantly yes. also there mm-hmm. will be you know it's okay. we have the university of the gambia thank mm-hmm. god and uh they're pretty smart guys over there sometimes as a, probably as an initial step is to really i mean these testing equipments are not like going to the moon mm. you know and there are if, if they had started collaborating with scientists at the university of gambia some of these testings could have been sort of contracted out to them and this will enable them also to have funding and you know to to, to improve their own scientific uh, uh te- te- mm-hmm. capabilities as well you know mm-hmm. these are areas you look into you need uh for instance for some of these things a, a, a very highly sort of a infrared spectrometer mm-hmm. which the university will need for other things as well mm-hmm. and other testing capabilities drug testing capabilities buy it for them and give it to them and the, pro- the students the professors the educational institution will benefit from it you know the typical issue would be oh, we wait WHO will come. come. <laughs> they will do this. They will do that. You know, some of these things we just have to do. We have just to do something by ourselves. Yeah. Yes. Start something. Absolutely. In Collaborate fact. with the University of the Gambia. Yes. These are pretty smart young guys there. Mm-hmm. But give them equipment, and then some of these basic <laughs> testings can be done there. Yeah. And having said that, also, I think it's time some of these. basic medications paracetamols we have tr- we try to Im- have manufacturing capability mm. within the country mm. you know you don't have to like paracetamol cough syrup uh, hand sanitizer uh, saline wait for somebody coming in uh, uh, my my partner is an expert from i don't know where i come in to get be an investor these things can really the government can facilitate mm. the manufacture of some of these basic things in here <laughs> and then 
somebody know, highly specialized drugs. Someone, maybe somebody listening to you said you, you, you have gone far ahead of where there isn't even a basic uh, <laughs> test, but you are talking about manufacturing. No, 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 but see, these are even simpler than, the, you know. No, I see. And, and some people do it. Like yeah. you yeah. see, or it can be done at a regional level. You know, at probably exactly, every country would not, may not have the capacity, yeah. but at least at if you have, level. like Senegal, for instance, Senegal? I think they have started. Senegal has in, a you know, cool Yeah, but you make sure quality. that you have a, a positive collaboration with them, exactly. where you have an input as well. Mm -hmm. Mm. Not just leave them to bring sell, to sell here. You have a, a positive collaboration where you have an input as well. Your scientists will have an input as well, and the government probably even an interest, as he says, a regional something. Mm. So some of these basic things really, it's an embarrassment. Uh, I mean, this was highlighted when COVID came. Mm. Could, people couldn't even have hand washing soap. <laughs> you have to import them. Mm. So some of these, these are things that we have to think about as well. Mm. Yes, because uh, in uh, when disaster strikes like yeah. COVID, mm -hmm. supply chains come to a halt. Exactly. Yeah. So, so if you, if you don't, don't produce them, old. you have to pay top dollar exactly. to make sure it comes. But what he has just said about there is something here mm -hmm. which touches on the UTG. Okay. Um, okay. But right. which is which highlights that I think they are definitely that's why we have an expert. Yeah, yeah. In the yeah. building, great minds, <laughs> great minds think alike. So <laughs> they, so guess what they report that. He's saying MCA it doesn't go as far as mm. he is recommending. Okay. MCA in partnership with UTG, AIUWA, and EFST, that's Edward Francis Small, mm. partners and others, and MRAs should train pharmacists mm. and other personnel along the value chain. Mm. That's number three. And yeah. it also goes to say MCA should recruit students who have graduated from UT UTG mm -hmm. in biochemistry. Mm -hmm chemistry and biological sciences mm. to strengthen its human resource capacity. So students from the UTG so, like, like could exactly be on a job very his, soon. His observations are spot on then. Spot on. And yeah, I think yeah. they should even go further mm -hmm. to um, take in part what he is recommending, yeah. which is to see how we can test those things mm -hmm. in the university yeah, exactly. and even some of these things maybe eventually <coughs> we could go into the manufacturing generate you income see? for the universities generate income so that's a very very good um thing which we any other major one before we see. go to the other topic now. yes i um we already talked about the big the big 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 one which this. was the firing oh yeah <laughs> we've, already, <laughs> we've already spoken but, about but that uh, one yesterday i saw some comments said who, some commentators suggesting that could have been they've just been used a sacrificial lump there are more conflict of interest things in there still yes. now that are not addressed but there might be more coming because it says and consider prosecuting them oh. in line with the relevant laws oh so, so um yes. this might not be the last that we hear about ah. the executive director for mca oh. and the um Oh. Deputy Executive Director, although some doubt that that will actually be uh, <laughs> acted upon, yeah. whether prosecution would actually happen. Oh. Um, well, <laughs> well, at least at least uh, people said some heads have rolled, whether they are whether they are just uh, window dressing or perhaps. Well, I think the pressure really is on because of this as a legal dimension mm -hmm. and oh. it puts the government on on this on the spot on the, on the edge to do to uh, be seen to be doing something. Uh, well. Uh, I mean, there's no choice, basically, <laughs> because people are going to court and their legal proceedings have consequ legal consequences. Yes, 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 yes. So people will be held liable, the government will be held liable, so the government have to find a way mm -hmm. to defy or deflect these yeah. consequences to some other institution. But basically, uh, the bottom line is it's a systemic failure and uh, they have to address it in a systemic way. It's not enough to just to focus on the MCA, because we all knew, everybody knew this conflict of, I mean, you go to any pharmacy and you see their, um, their label of uh, the, the supervising pharmacist is so and so, yeah. and he's never seen, he's, he's never, never there, never yes. been there, and it's not unknown. Yeah. So... I, I mean, the the, the, the he's talking about are those, the people whose licenses have been used, should they them, should themselves be yeah. in those pharmacies for some hours? four hours old depending on uh, what the regulations say yes. but if they are also sitting in mca or pharmacy council as administrators <laughs> when will they be able to go to their, their pharma pharmacy you know, why say their everything has procedural issues mm -hmm. if if this is the law and i don't think it should even be the law but if it is the law you have to show evidence of their presence and a specific date exactly. and time on time because this becomes important when it goes to court court yeah 
So 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 we don't we 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 we're careful not to not to give any clues to the lawyers. <laughs> but then there's something here, mm -hmm. um, which is saying the office of the secretary general mm -hmm. to review and address the issue of registered and licensed pharmacists who are currently employed by the government what? while then? doubling mm -hmm. as supervising pharmacists for private companies. Exactly, that's what we are talking about. What did he say, Gidley? Mm -hmm. Yes, this I will, I will repeat it again. This, yes. is, this is very important. Yes, because it this is what we've been talking you about. Are, yes. You are saying it, I'm reading, I'm <laughs> scanning quickly. Yeah. It says the Office of the Secretary General mm -hmm. to review and address the issue of registered and licensed pharmacists who are currently employed by the government while doubling as supervising pharmacists for private companies. Basically, he's saying yeah. that those those people who are at the MCA or the pharmacy council. This is opening a big can of worms. A can of worms. It's opening a big can of, can of worms. How many government employed health officers are currently employed in, 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 by yeah. other private mm -hmm. institutions? Wow, oh, wow, you see. Yeah. We, we, so we if you focus on pharmacists alone just because of this AKI crisis, you need to look into the other issues of other government health care workers who are employed by government. private institutions do they have a right don't they have a right if they have if they don't have a right why would you prevent them from wanting to like work for, for, a few extra hours for a few for, for Afrimed yeah. or for Medicare yeah, yeah. or this, for so like I said it all boils it, it's a lot of uh, I mean so you, so know you mean you mean uh, I mean just just targeting pharmacies yeah. because of this wouldn't be fair well, uh, I, mean, I, I mean you you have to look at uh, I, I mean all 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 the medical practitioners who are I don't know employed I mean, in the RPH, have to but um, uh, because of the AKI hospital, crisis yet they go to the private I don't know whether you really have to but because of the AKI crisis that's why we're focusing on the on MCA, this one, yes. on the, you the problem is bigger than <laughs> it's but bigger this than is this. Yes, exactly that's and that's why that's I was a good saying point, the recommendation you made should not only Go for the yeah, pharmacists, the pharmacist, and yeah. this is basically a problem in the Gambia. Yeah, yeah. It's a country of two million people, mm -hmm. and how many of those people have the technical within the country? Because many of our expertise are actually abroad, you know. Mm. And I think we should yeah. be doing a very good job of bringing those guys in, yeah. because of um, it's a hope that having been outside for quite a while and exposed to better <laughs> systems, yeah, they can systems. come and, you know, yeah, um, yeah. somehow... Yeah. Like um, Mr. Barrow did. Bring that in. Mr. Barrow is the clear, exactly. clear cut example. <laughs> you see, so I think that is very, very important. Mm. I've been going to the report, perhaps I haven't come to it yet, mm -hmm. um, but the issue of compensation... Yes, did it talk about it? Yes, it's one which I have been scanning the report for. You haven't seen it. Um, I did um, understand that the, um, the gentleman who was leading this... Um, report mm -hmm. did say he recommended for compensation for the but, victims. But it's nowhere in the report. Uh, I haven't seen that yet. But when we see that, we mm. will definitely make sure mm. we bring that out. It is not in the recommendation side. Oh, I yes, see. Which is where I believe it should have been. Mm. Okay, um, maybe somewhere or might not have been. Yes, but okay. we continue. We just got it yesterday. Oh, I see. We, okay. It's a 81-page document. And, and, and like, like Mr. Barrow and I have been indicating, we are constrained a little bit to talk about so that we don't give clues to the lawyers <laughs> <laughs> yeah your, your final word on this before we move to the other one yeah i mean uh, I, I think what has happened in this uh, in this instance is that well we have clearly i mean spelled out the conflict of interest but because this was specific for aki that's why it hasn't gone you know made recommendations for what but as uh, mr barrow has said definitely it is quite widespread within the I mean the health sector as well as in all other sectors of government you know this conflict of interest is there and it, it should be it addressed probably this is going to act as a you know as a catalyst yeah. for other sectors as well to look at those issues and see how best they can be able to address them before a similar situation arises in those areas as well yeah well flex you did a thorough and I'm sure we hear more from from you on this Aki thing. And I, I must commend you for really taking a huge, you know, dedicating a lot of uh, time <clears throat> to follow the... Uh, I'm sure those reports and, and the recent court cases um, mm. just started might have led government to I, I take to measures so. there. So let's turn so. to the Senegambia bridge. Mm. Uh, gentlemen, over the past week or so, it has been announced that the government's 
Well, now they said propose to sign an agreement with uh, a Africa 50. That is for the um, <clears throat> for them to manage the Senegambia bridge for 25 years, because the government wanted 100 million dollars. Mm. Now uh, there has been a lot of uh, criticisms, analysis, analysis. You know, which said uh, it should have gone to Parliament. The minister said, the, you know, he doesn't need to go to Parliament for that thing. The, the finance, I don't know what act, public finance act or whatever <laughs> act has empowered him uh, to do this kind of things on behalf of the government without going to Parliament. Some disagreed. So there's a lot of uh, uh, going, you know, back and forth uh, as far as the matter is concerned. What's your take? Uh, you know, I, I refuse to introduce you. Uh, political, uh, give you a political identity on the medical, medical one because I want a professional, <laughs> you know, sure. analysis of that. Now I must say that Mr. Barrow also is a member of the opposition Gambia for all party. What is your take on when you heard that uh, the bridge might be, well, some people call it mortgage? Either way, whatever you call it, mm. I, I can only say I am dumbfounded mm. because. Uh, 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 something of sub I mean apart from anything else of such symbolic value to the country apart from its financial uh, uh, material financial benefit that potentially accrue to us it's such a symbolic value for the country for the Minister of uh, Finance so you mean even even without money being raised yeah. the fact that we have that bridge and it's gambian and it's, it's enough gambian of, it's, it's enough of it's a so right to protect <laughs> protect yeah it's 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 entire surrounding or the, the whole valley surrounding it so my i'm dumbfounded in the sense that the apparently the minister went into has been going into some negotiations about this some say since january mm -hmm. Yes, it's been getting and there. now culminating today in in them coming out with a press conference. You know, sometimes to be honest, I think the government's pressed uh, machinery their own their, their you know their their own enemies because what is so simple to explain to the public if you believe in what you are doing and you think it is of benefit to the country, just explain to them two things either. Uh, two conclusions I can only draw, which are that either they don't know what they are doing, or they take the public for granted. Facts. Yes. And I'm sure this uh, this is another area that didn't escape you. Yeah, actually, yeah. <laughs> I was at the press conference. I know you. You are always there. <laughs> I was at that press conference mm. with your um, able film crew. Yeah, they were there also were doing there. a wonderful job. Mm -hmm. um, so and. Um, I'm a civil engineer as well. Ah, there I you left go. civil engineering. And the government said they yes. want money for more more infrastructure. Projects. I would put it into this way. Mm. Um, our Ministry of Works <laughs> should get to a stage where we can build our own infrastructure, maintain that infrastructure, and manage that infrastructure. Fine. We couldn't build a bridge of that magnitude because it was the first time we've had such a bridge we can let that one slide we mm. don't have that expertise we do have gambians abroad who i know that can design and build that bridge mm -hmm. and for me there's nothing special about having one lane here one lane there bridge mm. that is just so we are not forward thinking that's mm. the first part Mm. Two, although that has now gone. You mean the, 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 they should, there could have been two it should separate have been. It lanes. should have been. That Minimum. Fine, fine. At least three. There, there is no if, if, solder on it yeah, for, for emergency. Exactly. Vehicle. For emergency. If you have ah, a breakdown now like on, well, that, on that bridge, that's bridge yeah, you are doomed. It's you are doomed. Yes. Like that, that lane will not move. Oh, it's terrible. So yes. that you is, need, and you need a helicopter. It's it should, mm. <laughs> you, you would need, you, Where will it land? You can know. You can or you, just, or, or you, you will just drop ropes from. You wouldn't need a helicopter. You would have a vehicle which would come and tow it. But that is if you but have the facilities. When, when, when yeah. the whole bridge is blocked with other traffic. Yes, you will have to have yeah. it on each side, one mm. on each side. So you just go and then fit it in. Actually, and yeah. Another observation that I made mm. from the very beginning when the bridge was being constructed was, you know, the 
the height of the bridge. Mm. You remember, we used to have a ship, yeah. ships going but, but all the way to, say they can no, all the way to, but, not, they said, but at uh, the moment, you know, don't expect can't. big ships to be able to pass under that bridge. They can't, they, with their mast or not. There is no way. We used to have these big ships going all the way to Kaur and Punta to collect, you, you know, You mean, you mean the, the likes of uh, Mansha Kilab and Lady Wright or Lady Chill, I mean, uh, that, that type cannot go now. No, with the mast there, uh, there is no way they mast. can be able to pass under that And, and, and they don't. Because that's possible. The, I mean, it's, anyway, uh, I think honestly, that's uh, uh, now behind us. That's now, now behind, behind us. Now. Well, of course, it's, that, that, <laughs> yeah. that's, that's But we should think yeah. about it. I mean, it's good to be raised until next time. At first, they said, like what they were, you know, talking about, that the one being proposed for Banjul Vara, I was... It should be detachable up and break yeah, so that you yeah. know vessels can pass. Vessel can I mean, they can't afford this one. They can't afford to do without that one on, on, on course, the banjul one because course. obviously the ships will have to come. But we were told that the bridge is high enough no. for, for vessels to pass. So I was not the, not the big ones, definitely. Big ones. Ah, so, but so, to what extent? So we are stuck with that now. Yes, yeah. yeah, so, so, so the one, second as aspect yeah. uh-huh. is the maintenance. Mm-hmm. Now, normally, what you would do is you would have your people. Um, monitoring the construction of the bridge mm-hmm. so that they would be anticipating for pre- in preparation of maintenance mm-hmm. so that when you have to maintain this bridge you have people who were part of the construction understand how the bridge was done and therefore when it comes to maintenance they'll be able to do that work it doesn't seem like we have that capacity no, I mean, just <laughs> a good example is the, 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 the Dentin Bridge. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's due for maintenance, but nothing has been yeah, done. Yeah, Dentin Bridge, 1984. So, so, uh, so you see, these are three different aspects. The final aspect now is the management aspect. And we are also going to do what? Subcontracted. We are subcontracting everything in this country. <laughs> subcontracting everything. And if you subcontract, it's just overheads. Anything yeah. you, you subcontract is just overhead. But I must give the government credit. Mm-hmm. Because 100 million US dollars today mm-hmm. is not the same as 100 million dollars in 25 years' time. Mm-hmm. You are having a lot more purchasing power no. with that 100 million US dollars right now, mm-hmm. upfront money. Oh, yeah? that's, a, that's, good, that's a good point. That's a very important point. Mm-hmm. And my article I published didn't touch that. Mm-hmm. Actually, some project managers and those who are even more in the know um, got in touch, and I got to find out that that is also a very important So, you aspect. mean if there is any wisdom in this yes. at all it is that if they get the money and they spend it as 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 earmarked mm-hmm. they probably have more purchasing power with it now no. than that it can fetch yes. yeah i mean for me definitely i yeah. i think it's an innovative idea you know i mean this uh, kind of um, mortgage Carignance. or whatever you know recycling or whatever as it's an innovative but the question is that um um I think the way it was done also, and the, the, the time, amount, the length of time they've given, 25 years. Mm. I mean, imagining that, you know, as they have, you know, because they've been contradictory as to how much uh, yeah, been, yeah, uh, yeah, collecting from different, the bridge. Different, Let's assume different. that it's 40 million. Is it? Well, the minister's is last was 59 million. Is it per month? No, no, no. Per, it's, month. It's, it's okay. per month. Per month is 30 to um, 40. But the okay. first month, I'm telling you, the 45. minister in his okay. latest. It's assuming that the minister it's 40, in his latest intervention. Uh-huh. 25 years. That's on that's record. It. The minister yeah. said 59. Okay. I mean, yes, he wow. said when they went in there to, you know, to, to put yeah. in things that can really prevent revenue mm. being leaked, he yeah. said 59. No, he said he first said 49. I was there. Okay, whatever, whatever the case. He, he whatever the case. He, he assuming, himself to say 49. assuming that it's, it's 40, that? 40 million. Yeah, on the month. same day. Yeah. Where? On the same day, yes. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he, on, he, on the day of the press conference. On the day of the press conference. But we conference. have him on record uh, a couple of. A couple of weeks, three weeks, four weeks back, he's saying yeah, that's that they, 59. They've been mm-hmm. saying that, that the, the standard has always been misquoting them. So <laughs> no, no, no. It's, that's what they it's one, say. <laughs> no, it, this one video here. We can bring it right. We played yeah, it last. We played okay. it last week. Okay. Okay. Said 59. Either way. 59. Either way. Yes, exactly. Either exactly. Way. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Assuming that you know it's 40 million per month. You know, I mean, Either 25 way. years definitely would have more than five times. The, I mean, the hundred million that we are talking about. Mm. Definitely. I mean, I have no doubt. I think the, the, the period is just too long. But they don't need even money now. <laughs> yeah, but what I'm saying is, I mean, it's possible also. And the other question is, that, I mean, if uh, the government has to go, without going through the National Assembly, how do you, I mean, determine that this amount of, this money they are receiving, they are going to uh, judiciously use it for mm. the benefit of the country? I think it's important because it is not in the budget. 
I mean, but if they were to go to the National Assembly, at least it will be opposed on as to how much they will be able to explain to us what they intend to do with the, um, the money, then it will be. But just giving them that money and then nobody is telling, I mean, telling us about how they're going to use that amount of money. I, I'm really worried about that. I, I think that should be addressed as well. That's what I'm saying. Either way, mm. either way uh, to, because really you could see that the minister and his team are struggling for terminology, mortgage monetizing whatever you want to come up with. Basically, <laughs> this I concluded as trading in a national asset, whatever. Yeah. It's trading in a national asset. And to be engaged in that kind of negotiation and discussion and not saying anything to the public. And it's a loan. At least for open discussion. Well, they, they don't want to call it a loan. <laughs> whatever. <laughs> at least for, look, even it's if it's it is, look, it's, it may not be, they may be legally right in what they are saying. I really don't know. Mm. But morally, I mean, politically, mm. it's in their interest yeah, to, tell to, to en engage national discussion on this matter and come to a conclusion. Well, well the very first they time may the be people, right. people had the government may, had There it. may be justification for this, and some people are saying uh, it is an innovative idea, it but is. you don't just juggle stuff out of the air because you are the, the clever minister of finance. Look, <laughs> we went, if you are as old as I am in Denver, you know that we went through ERP. Yeah, in 1985, I was clearly young. explained to everybody the pain we have to suffer to get what we want. Mm -hmm. And we knew, and it was painful. Yeah. But at the end of the day, it put the country on the right economic trajectory yeah. until the disaster of 1990. The <laughs> came. So, what, <clears throat> I mean, if they believe that this is good for the country, and they believe it is an innovative idea. What is the secrecy about it? Mm. Well, and this what? is because it's, yeah. you know, I this is not the first time. Is lacking. Communication yeah, is yeah, lacking. Yeah. And this is yeah. the first time this has happened. Well, we are brought down with this security port issue. We mm -hmm. don't know who signed it, how Some we signed, who did it, how we were. You know, a whole bunch of uh, yeah, complicated yeah. issues. And we are stuck with it for 15, 14 years. Exactly. The security report. It wouldn't have happened this one if there was we'll be, we'll be stuck with it for 25 years. And we were promised that uh, there was going to be, for that security report for that matter, the, the government was following the matter up, there would have been an investigation and they would come out. What did we get? A price increase. <laughs> <laughs> well, well the government, government that, said they, never, the they were never consulted. On this bridge. They were never consulted. On that, on that, so on that the same thing uh, could have prices. been happening here. Because the whole thing about the security report issue, if you look at it, First of all, for any sensible person, you get to the airport, you see the sign, mm -hmm. 20 pounds, 20 dollars, or, or 20 dollars. euros. These are different amounts. Absolutely. Governments don't operate Absolutely. like this. Yeah, yeah. You yes. what, if government revenue is being accrued or taken or whatever. It has to be specific. It amount. has to be specific. 20 pounds is different from 20 dollars is from, from, from 1,000 dollars. And 1,000 dollars if, if you matter. If you give and foreign currency worse, is 20, 20 dollars. Matters worse, if you give dollars is 1,000. Yeah. Nobody knows what happens you know, with, it just, with the it, difference. It's marks of incompetence, really. Indeed. Or even like a scam, more or less. Yeah. That's why a lot of people anyway. are really raising alarms about, and it's affecting our tourism industry. Oh yes, but yes, to yes, come yes. to um, the current issue, yeah. it's in a similar issue. People are concerned yes. whether the tariff will not increase. Increase, the, that's the right. Yeah, because if you give the you management know? to some guys yeah. who's not from the Gambia, so you it, never they know. can get the up and say every vehicle one thousand dollars, whatever. Oh. And, and the oh, worst said every vehicle one thousand dollars. I will, not, I, I will oh. not be able to cross there. And the worst thing. Mm. There are even some who are concerned that Gambians may lose jobs. You are given this management. What if people come in there and they say, okay, you are giving me to manage this. It is now for me to manage. You are not going to force me Absolutely. to hire yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> Uncle yeah. D.A. Jawa yeah. because he's the veteran yeah. journalist. Mm -hmm. In your eyes, he might be the veteran journalist, but yeah. I am managing this. is my responsibility. Yeah. I might but the government has told that the people who are working there right now have... No, they cannot assure no, that cannot at all. Assure that. They no, cannot assure that. They are just saying Absolutely. that they, they gave some they explanation. They basically said there will be no lost job. No, no what, he's, what he no said... No loss of job. I, I'll give his, he said no that, job losses. He said that those people, there are options for them that they can return because those people there are currently at the accountant general office. Office, that's what they say. So they will find space for them. Or to they return. can always take them back. Yes, take uh, them back, mm. or but they will also try for the companies to um, retain, you know, to retain, retain them as well. Uh, so, but that will only be negotiations yeah. because of currently, if we are So, but what do, you, what do you make of the minister trying to suggest that 
nothing concrete has been signed. It was just an MOU. It's an MOU. It's an MOU. It's, it's a, yeah, it's an MOU on the basis of the agreement and negotiation. So there will be further negotiation before they finalize. So it's normal. They will have an MOU. Mm-hmm. And um, but once you have an MOU which is signed, mm-hmm. there is no reason why this is a national document. Release it to the public. What is there to hide? Condition people. Will so know these are the it. things which the minister is missing, in mm-hmm. my perspective. Yeah. But I think well, he's we been. Need... We understand he's been called uh, by national assembly, mm. but he's he's out of the jurisdiction. He's out of the jurisdiction. Maybe, maybe we will um, wait. Issue, talking about the national assembly, it's, mm. there is something here which we have been doing some research. It brought to our attention. Section seventy nine one, mm. subsection C, dictates that the president. This I quote. The president shall be responsible for the negotiation and, subject to the ratification by the National Assembly, the conclusion of treaties and other international agreements. Now, this is Africa 50 is an international organization. Well, the government said it's, it's, and it's, this is it's, a, it's not a private company, so it's well, yeah, it's they, it will be a domestic. There was it's a domestic. <laughs> no, it cannot be domestic. They, no, no, they, they will have a SG a special a, a body ah. that is going to be registered here. Registered here, and okay. then. So this is exactly where I am about to come to. Mm. So, but what people need to know what Gambia stands to benefit. It's mm. not just the hundred million, mm. yeah. And there are gaps in information mm. from what the minister is giving us, mm-hmm. so that we can give you everything. Mm. We get the upfront hundred million mm-hmm. U.S. dollars. Not you, 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 you been following the news recently. That's not coming in. Yeah. In fact, at the same time, it's, I it's think three it's 40, installments 30, 30, 30. Okay, three in one year. Yeah, 40, 30, 30. That's yes. not what they told us. Well, that's yeah. what they just... see. This is, is this is what I I quoted him. He said, he said from three streams of cash flow, they will have three, three streams. That's what I'm streams. saying. Three no, installments. No, but the three streams mm. are, are not three installments. Ah, okay. Yeah. So the three streams are this. Mm. One is upfront cash. I mean, one hundred million. That's the first one mm. stream. You get that. That according to what he said. I, I thought that it's split into three. No. Okay. Then the third one. Mm-hmm. The second one now is tax dividend tax. as shareholder. And taxes. Yeah, and then taxation is the third one. But the dividend as shareholder, this is how it works. Mm. Gambia is getting 12.5%, mm. whilst Africa, um, 50. 50, will get 87.5%. Mm. Yeah? A joint venture will be created, mm-hmm. and that company will be split according to those shares. Mm. But now, what will happen? Mm-hmm. If at all, mm-hmm. say we receive 150 for, to, for make, to make things easy, mm-hmm. say we receive 100 million that month, mm-hmm. there is a stipulated amount because of the 100 million US dollars mm-hmm. that will be deducted and paid to Africa 50. Mm-hmm. And that information is a gap of information which we don't know. Mm-hmm. The minister should tell us. So there should be money from this thing to, to, to Africa 50. 50 upfront, the first every month, yeah, what we collect, there is an upfront amount you give. Now, I the, remaining, the, ones providing the, uh, the remaining the money amount, in the first place, the they, they give us 100 million up front. Uh-huh. But every month, mm-hmm. once the agreement has kicked in, mm. yeah, according to the MOU right now, mm. if we, so we are already enjoying the 100 million. That's in our bank. Yeah? Is it all? Yeah, yeah, that's yes, in our yeah. bank account. Okay. Already? Okay? No, no, no he I'm said saying, supposing uh, yes, everything. I'm, I'm giving a theoretical. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so the agreement is this we get the 100 million, fine. Mm. Okay. Now, once every month we Collection. start to repay, yeah. we will what if it's hundred yeah, million? You mean repay? Uh, once they have yeah, every month we'll be paying the, we'll be paying Africa fifty. No, no. What, what, I what, they I, understand, manage it what I understand is that they are managing the bridge and collecting completely, you know, collecting yeah. to pay. It's not until that money is recouped. Nothing to do with. No, no, no. That's exactly what I'm saying. Until the money. So the hundred million is US dollar doesn't have anything okay. to do with that. Mm. But what I'm saying now. Mm. We have finished. That one has packed aside. Okay. Mm. Now every month, mm. that the agreement kicks in. Mm. If we make, for example, that one one first month, we make like say hundred million. They yeah? make hundred million. Yeah, they make hundred. They are collecting. Yeah, they yes. make. Uh-huh. So, yeah. but what is going to happen is there is an amount that we cut off, pay them, and then now out of the remaining. Is where the eighty-seven point five and twelve point five percent kicks appears, in. You know the way you are talking. I don't know if you see what I'm saying. As if uh, the government is the one collecting. Well, no, it will it be, is, they are the people directly. No, collecting. according to what they are saying, there is going to be a joint venture. Yeah. Mm. And in this joint venture. But that local, re- locally registered. Uh, it will Africa be locally. 50 yes. Will be the one collecting. Collecting. No, well, they say that it's going well, to be a joint venture. 
<laughs> it's a joint venture between government okay. and Africa 50. So I that's see. what they are they are saying mm. according to the information that they are giving us. I so see. and then it will be a domiciled um Mm. Company, company, yeah. company which will be paying tax here and be bound by the Gambia's and rules and all, regulations. And for all this, you think uh, you, the clever person, only have the right to negotiate <laughs> and not inform the public. And then involve the procurement. Why does this not so even it does go sound, through? It does sound well, I think what, in fact, yeah, just, like, yeah. just like what might have happened in the case of the court cases, prompting, maybe, prompting the release of the government report now, um, it is the backlash to the interview the minister had internationally um, that people had here, and people begin to ask, ah, so why didn't they tell us here in the first place? Mm. But that question was put to him. He said, well, we, I mean, nothing was signed uh, before before Togo, the meeting in Togo, and the journalists were on hand immediately after they asked this question. So he was responding to a question that was put to him on the spot at the signing ceremony. That's why he came out with it. But then you know he was he was tasked as to why didn't we know about this before? So yes. that that, saying, that is what prompted that and other the analysis prompted the press conference. Two things: either they don't know what they are doing, or they just take the Gambian population for granted. You can do anything you want. So, so what do you think, gentlemen? Three of the three of you. One word from what? What do you think will be the fate of this proposal? Will it, do you think it will it will actually be, be concretized of the reality? Or well, well as think? far as I'm concerned, I think uh, it's quite an innovative idea. And, you know, probably we can give it a try. But what I'm saying is some of these concerns should be addressed. The, what is going to happen to the money? I mean, they need to spell out, I mean, uh, in detail as to how they are going to spend this money so that people can at least take them, you know, I mean, be able to monitor and know that these uh, monies have been, I mean, budgeted to, to take care of these particular things, these particular areas. And uh, I think that should be done through the National Assembly. That's what I think. I mean, and I think the 25 years also is too long a period. They should definitely renegotiate that uh, that period because if they are getting this amount of money per month, you know, presently, I see no reason why it should last 25 years before they would be able to get their 100 million back and whatever. I mean, uh, they spend on I mean, uh, administration and other things. So that's what I think. I think those areas need to be addressed. But it's an innovative idea, and I think we should give it a try. Because if they are collecting about a million dollars, see. Um, a month, a million dollar a month, because roughly, according to the Minister 59, mm -hmm. it's almost a million dollar, a little over a million, a little, a little, a little over, a little over um, mm -hmm. uh, a million dollar. No, it's, it's, it's so it, it, they need 100 months to, to, to collect it. That's still far less than 25 years, I, isn't I, it? I, I, 100 months they will need it. Ah. So, <laughs> if we are going, going by their own calculation, it will take 100 months. And, and hence, a, hence the need now to get it in advance. But um, to speak to that, there is a 15% yeah, that's uh, what, return in investment. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so we had what, an expert last week who was trying to I, tell us. I don't understand fully what that means. I'm ah, not well. that good. But <laughs> I know that, for example, if they reach that return on investment, the 25 year will not be uh, will will before the end of the 25 year. They would have realized then the, then, the, yes, then the deal would be over. Then the, I see. They yes. will return to the Gambians. Yes. Management. But they, they emphasize that the uh, the bridge is always owned by Gambia. Yes. So, so they did, owned by Gambia, so it exactly. wouldn't go anywhere. So they did highlight that yeah. part. You know, I'm and also trying to be fair to them, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. to look at it in both ways because of there are two ways this could go. My belief is if they had put out the, all the information. Yeah. then enough people would have had the opportunity to make recommendations, recommendations. to improve it we and then go through parliament and then this shouldn't be an issue. Exactly. No. Last you know? week we had Mr. Mane who used to work at the uh, African Development Bank. He said what he didn't understand was why was the government so desperately in need Indeed. of 100 million supposedly for infrastructure project when you could have money for such projects in a lot more conciliatory or concessionary manner, not too much painful to the gamble. Why didn't they, according to him, why didn't they ta take that route? No, but if you look at it, this is actually from the expert, I've seen an expert publication um, which was shared, and they say that this is actually better than a loan. <coughs> so if you are getting a loan mm. to do your infrastructure, mm. um, that isn't as lucrative as this. The problem though, um, which. Couldn't they get grants? You could get grants if you are lucky. Grants is always good. 
grants are always good. The brick was, <laughs> the brick was built by, from a grant. From a grant. Yes, because of we... The, the bridge you know, was a you grant. Know, the, build, the bridge was a grant only because there are reasons why the bridge was a grant. Why? Well, Yaya Jame was, was not going to take any of it. He was not and going to take a loan to it. Yes, to he refused. And he, he was even convinced. Mm. Even in our publication, we break down. Mm. He he was even Senegal is actually Smith. taking a loan on this. Yeah. Yeah. A fraction. It's, I think it's yeah, small yeah, three, money on that. Three, some, three, over three million US dollars. Yeah, US dollars. to their interest. Of loan. Right. So, Either way, like I say, it's uh, from a political perspective. It, it's probably economically uh, brilliant. They've thought it about well, but from a political perspective, they could have come out mm -hmm. transparently. Mm -hmm more transparently, mm -hmm. with clarity. Mm -hmm. It's not beyond them. They, 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 I mean, they have smart economies. And they, just okay. because you have an economy, you don't have to do these things by yourself because it, 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 it puts the country in a bind somehow. Mm -hmm. For 25 years. For 25 years. So your cleverness alone is not enough. You must really discuss with uh, parliament in their own way, stakeholders. Ah, <laughs> said that, and that means parliament. Yeah. The public. I'm the talking about parliament, finally, finally. What do you make of their SUVs? <laughs> it's been in the news. That two point, each of them will get 2.5 million uh, worth of uh, Prado, Prado Land Cruiser. Yes. There have been a lot of controversy, and people have accused the political parties of not even taking, making their position known about these things. What do you make of it, Jao, very quickly? Yeah, I mean, uh, well, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, I think, uh, the, of course, the National Assembly members deserve to have vehicles to be able to do their work effectively. But I think the cost is just too much. The, 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 the vehicles are too expensive, you know, considering, I mean, the, the economy, the size of our economy, as well as the, the people that they represent in parliament. Can you imagine, you know, riding on that flashy, you know, vehicle, going to a place, uh, let's say... Going to Choya. I mean, going to uh, <laughs> Ibo, Ibo town where those people yeah, cannot right. even sleep because all their houses are inundated with, you know, I mean, they... Uh, it's. It's honestly, it doesn't make sense. I think I think the vehicles are just too expensive, and uh, you know, an other issue also is that uh, some of the members of the National Assembly have no constituency whatsoever. They are nominated members. Oh, nominated members. They are nominated members. I mean, they represent nobody ah. apart from President Barrow and their family. So maybe they want to write to <laughs> go mean, to President Barrow every we, every I mean, every how Friday. Do you justify it? even spending a budget on those people. <laughs> I mean, those are the issues. I think we should be considering all those. Huh? Definitely. So maybe they will write it and go to. President Barron said, well, well mean, we, ha think, we discussed yesterday, yeah, I, mean, I, I had I to come I think they should have put all those things into consideration before they, you know, order these vehicles for them, yeah. honestly. It's but because you just to accept that. They said, they need, if they need a vehicle, they need a good one, a quality one that will last long. Hence the, hence the, the Prados. Mm. So, but you feel and things there too expensive. No, I, uh, as far as I'm concerned, Mr. Yeah, Mr. 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 Barrow. Well, I would, I think my overall view of this is, uh, I would just conclude this in the local language. Is all at a dog or ramble and not Nanya Ram. I get your point. And this is Nanya Ram, it's real ah. Nanya. So this one is Nanya Ram. Ah, ah. ah. Yeah. okay. So you know what he said? He said they yeah. need really a car. They need a work, work vehicle, not a show of vehicle. Not one they, for luxury. They, they yeah. need a certain, not, they need, not they need a work vehicle, not a not luxury show vehicle. Of, yes. Not for luxury one. I, I yeah. think for me, the first thing I will recognize that. Um, it's 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 expensive, yeah. but it isn't a step in the right direction. Mm. Considering last term, ah, you mean it's an uh, improvement? It is an from improvement. 2017. Yes. When uh, a mysterious donor gave uh, huh. them 57. What you don't want is to have <laughs> mysterious donors <laughs> behind the scenes mm. manipulating mm. and getting favors mm. through Parliament. I think that would be a president. Disaster. President Barrow has still yes. not tell, told people where he got that. <laughs> where was, you see, what, until now we don't know who he hasn't said that. <laughs> you see, so that, mm. that's the first thing. We, it, this has been institutionalized through the National Assembly, mm. and parliamentarians will be paying fifty percent of it. They've started with deducting. They've them. been deducted the monies of it. So, but um, what should have happened, in my view, is to pack it maximum one million dollars. Mm -hmm. Why? 2.5 times, we're not talking about just 10, get 10 cars times 58, my, um, my, 55 National Assembly members. My type 10. of car, you can get uh, 10 of it from, not 20 of it actually, <laughs> from, 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 one, yeah. from one that's going to be given to my MP, I mean, um, Farcham. So I think they could have pegged the price at 1 million. Mm. And there are two reasons for this. 
the reductions from National Assembly members will also be less. If say if it is one million, you will be paying five hundred thousand for five years, and that's a hundred thousand per year, mm. which is like less than ten thousand dollars per month. Mm. If you consider that, I would have deducted that from I, I your salary. I haven't had as a anything period, about. I, did, I, 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 I didn't get details like how are the speaker and the deputy speaker. Ah, you see, those are they, the they things have, that... They are MDs do they have they've a already bigger, got it. Do they have a big uh, vehicle already? No, they've already, <laughs> already got it. What are going to happen to that? <laughs> and also, uh, if you win a second term... Mm. So I think there are things that should be considered in this. If you win a second term and you have just got a 2 million, 2.5 You get another million, car. You get another car? Yes. yes. No, that doesn't make any <laughs> sense whatsoever <laughs> to me. And that's, they are keeping those mysterious... Uh, some, some of them who are still... Uh, yeah. I mean, pick motorable, up, or pick still up, yeah. moving. Mm -hmm. They're still keeping them. Mm -hmm. So that means uh, that you will uh, just be accumulating vehicles yeah, for yeah, every yeah, time yeah. that you are given. You see, these are the things that they should tracticalize it. You should. There should be some sort of a. There should be a vehicle for only for an MP. For when you get out, two terms. You leave it there. If you for do government. two terms, yeah. I can understand ten years. Mm. You might need another vehicle. Yeah. That I can understand. Yeah. Like to be rational. Yeah. But. Five years, yes, of course. And then you another just five years, you get another yeah. big vehicle. As long as you are, you get elected, of course, or nominated, you so get. So you vehicle. see, so for me, those are the things. Those things don't make sense. Yeah, it really, to be honest, uh, it doesn't. It does. I mean, it doesn't make moral sense mm. at all that uh, you are Spending representing things. a constituency where less than one dollar a day is the average income, and you are driving in a three point five million dollar vehicle. Two point five. Uh, whatever. But, but, I what don't know what, if you add things together. No, it's just that what's on, what's on Gambia came out with, with not, lots of posts saying I don't that it was 3.5, 4 million. What are our ministers are driving 7 point million? Yeah, yeah, but that's not theirs. That's the office. The car belongs but to the office. But do they need that? Do they yeah, that okay, of course. I mean, I agree. When we have a former minister here, when you were a minister, um how did it go? When you did you pay half of it or no? no that was, that was, those were not folded. This were kept by the office. state. Okay, you leave you when you leave the office. When you go. I mean, that's, but that's some people take those vehicles. No, 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 no. 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 There's no way you can buy it. Or no, no, you cannot take it. it I mean, that's how people are saying the MP's vehicle should also be arranged. Either way, either way, this government's vehicle policy has been the greatest amount of wastage. Very much. I mean, I I I describe it as a fuel coupon racketeering. <laughs> it just that the cost of the vehicle alone is a fortune yeah. for a poor nation like us. And, and for fuel coupons, you know, it's costing it's millions and millions of the government it's, every, it's, it's, every it's, month. Yeah, every it's, month, it's, you know. It's so virtually all these people live in the... I mean, it's it's Dawson like it's it's like the order. sub it's yeah. like the sub currency in the country it is, it is, now. Thomas Sankar is sold of all the luxurious vehicles he he, he found there and and, and asked MPs to drive off. Oh, Two point five million times. 55 let's just go 55 and not include let's say 50 um, oh, well, let's just go 58 let's just go the whole parliament yeah here. that's 145 million dollars dollars uh, yeah no no together 2.5 times all uh, okay. of the parliamentarians now this is why i say but if you peg it at 1 million one times 58. I don't even 58, have to do the 58 calculation. You don't have it's just 58 million. It's so, I wouldn't say okay, just, okay. but okay. it's and a million dollars. So a million dollars a car is a very good maths, car. Right? You're yes, doing sir. the maths. Yes, sir. Okay, 2.5 million times whatever you say, 50, 58. 58, that's yes. how much? We have 100 and um, something. That's 100 and. 2.5 let's go 145 million dollars yes. yes. you 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 put that towards that money you want to get the bridge for uh -huh. <laughs> and, and see how you away. would reduce your liability <laughs> exactly this is my reasoning why for me they must peg it that's right. this amount should yeah. be pegged minister anybody but I, like he said but there was this uh, there was this well cut out well thought out uh, vehicle policy we could have mm. saved us our money absolutely it yeah. didn't go so yeah, I, I think i think that's how it is well anyway. gentlemen uh this has been the brunch i thank malamin baro microbiologist and uh, a member of the opposition gambia for all party uh yusuf tello flex uh, who is the editor of guy nago who's been writing a lot about this Aki and other issues and our man journalist Demba Ali Jao. All of you thank you very much for being on the bunch. Inshallah we'll be back next week.
In a day and age where technology is creating a world without borders, filled with unlimited potential to improve the lives of the people around us. InnovaRex Global Health ushers in a new way of leveling the playing field with increased access to quality healthcare services delivered at your doorstep. Our qualified professionals are equipped with state-of-the-art point-of-care testing technology to conduct tests such as kidney function, liver function, electrolyte tests, body composition, hemoglobin, A1C, and many more services with the highest efficiency in delivering results. The addition to our flagship Wellness on Wheels, more fondly known as WOW Delivery Service, brings the entire clinical experience full circle. IGH has remained committed to creating the future of healthcare delivery. Gone are the days of sending loved ones outside the country for basic medical services. Innovarex Global Health offers a new peace of mind and takes pride in delivering the quality of care we all deserve. Islamic microfinance is becoming an increasingly popular mechanism for poverty alleviation, especially for developing countries around the world. This microfinance service adheres to the principles of Islam as a form of social responsibility. Yona Islamic Microfinance is the Islamic microfinance of choice in the Gambia, trustworthy and reliable. At Yona Islamic Microfinance, we provide savings products, current accounts, financing products in conformity with Islam. In addition, Yona Islamic Microfinance also offers local and international remittances, takaful fund, management of zakat, management of awqaf, trading and investment, and building of strategic partnerships to bring financial services to the doorstep of the poor with donor projects, madrasas, youth organizations, women groups, and farmer organizations. Make a choice with Yona Islamic Microfinance today. For more information on Yona Islamic Microfinance, call 377-2151 or 9832-151 or visit Yona Head Office at Tipa Garage, Bakote or visit any Yona branch located countrywide near you.